I would like to say, uh, when you're taking medicine and surgery, the course uh, runs for six years. In the first three years, we are in preclinical stage. In preclinical stage, we take uh, practicals in preclinical stage, so the first three years of learning. After that, we go to clinicals. In clinicals, we go, we follow the doctors and they give us the instructions. So it is like a cl clinical practice. When we, after graduation is when we go for internship. So the question is, is someone considered a student after they have graduated? Because internship is just a mandatory working to ensure that you get your license. So if the government does not have enough money to, to be able to post the interns, I think you can just give licenses after the students have graduated. Because reducing as someone who has already uh, gone to school for six years and uh, gotten their, their degree and calling them a student is like, um, really saying the six years was for nothing so uh, if we cannot afford interns and interns should be paid uh, well for the work that they are doing if we cannot afford them we should license the students after they have graduated like how much? so on the issue of help it is actually a proposal by the treasury to reduce the the money that is allocated to help by 3.7 billion that amount is uh, quite huge when you consider the fact that uh, if you compare 2017 and uh, right now, the number of students who are being taken to the university has increased by around 200,000. So if anything should be done to help, it should be increased so that these extra students are also facilitated for. And uh, with the new funding model, higher learning education has become quite expensive for parents. And there are some people from a very uh, humble backgrounds who rely on help to be able to carry out their studies. Yeah. Uh, my call to the minister is that, one, they should refuse that proposal from the treasury. They should uh, speak about, they should really have all the statistics about the students who they are taking to the universities and uh, how much those students require in their, in their studies. So uh, the ministry should not accept the amount that they are being uh, told to reduce by the treasury and uh, other, other than not accepting, they should actually push for it to be increased because of the gaps that help is already leaving for students. Um, we have a lot of issues that are affecting our students that are not having enough financial muscles. And we know that as comrades, our only salary is help. We are flagabusted and we are left in yonder and in wonders that help amount is going to be reduced by the government. But we wonder, as youths, when the policies are being implemented by the government, where are we? As student leaders, why are we not called to that table so that we are told how these things are going to happen and how they are going to affect students? We demand that the help should not be reduced. It better remains where it is or the amount is adjusted further. Uh, the four mentioned issues of help would love to uh, continue giving our stand on this particular matter. It is a matter which ought to be carried out in uh, the strict sense that it deserves because help is the salary of the comrades. Without help, these comrades cannot survive and they have legitimate expectation that they will receive help in its full amount or even additional because of the tough economic times. So we'd love to give our stand on that particular issue. <laughs> to go to the countries where the labor is needed so if we want our country to retain the youthful people who have been trained by the country a lot of our students that we are training in this country are going to be working outside. In schools right now, 108,000, sorry, and uh, the 208,000, that was not, that was just the 40, 130 to 150 Kenyan shillings, 150,000 Kenyan shillings, which I think is...